for jumping into Final Fantasy XIV for the fourth time. Might it be on Epoch with the release of that coming up or on any other platform? Well, this is the video for you because I am here to give you a whole bunch of tips to help you get the most out of Final Fantasy XIV, especially starting out since I know it can be super overwhelming with over 10 years of content. And today I'm going to help you figure out what is the best thing to do, what it was your time as well as some activities you might want to take part in as soon as you start. So let's go ahead and begin it with character customization. This is going to be 100% up to you because we got a grand total at the time of that video at least. Eight decent races here with human, elf, lollyfell, a court cat, boy, big dude, dragons, cat, and bunny. And we all know bunnies are the white ansel. But nonetheless, go ahead and create your character in any real way you want to do it. And of course, uh, we do have, of course, like your Quantat. The Quantat heal uh, is not that important. Like, yeah, you can see over here uh, that uh, depending on what Quan you pick for whatever race you are, you will have different stat bonuses here. A lot of these stats are very minor and don't really matter that much overall. But if you someone who do want to mid-mat like 1% more stat, feel free to look at that. But just know... I would not stress over it too much since at the end of the day, this is such a minor descent. It doesn't really matter what race as well as what clan you pick. But once you got that taken care of, we of course got our appearance. And of course, like any other character creation, I think many options, create your character to uh, however you see fit. And then our net part of character customization is uh, picking your birthday. This is mainly for roleplay reason or for anyone that really care about this type of stuff. It did not affect gameplay at all. This is totally just a customization for you to pick. And once you go ahead and pick your birthday heal, are we going to go ahead and jump into Galleons? This is once again a, another roleplay app at the game. So feel free to read over this if you want to. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but go ahead and Pick whatever tickle your fancy or just go ahead and hit continue. And from here, we're going to go ahead and pick our classes. The thing to keep in mind here is there are different classes with inside of Final Fantasy here from a magic to a core more like melee DPS classes. So the main thing here to keep in mind here is this doesn't matter that much either. Because the thing about Final Fantasy 14 is you're going to be able to to change your classes as you see fit as long as you have the item that is tied to that class such as of course a warrior being a sword a mage being a thap and so on but you will notice here depending on what you pick you will start in a distant zone altogether of one of the three main capital city from around we born and of course with this you might be thinking you're kind of locking yourself in but do not worry uh, how this is operating is once you get so far in the story, which only take like two to three hours, maybe less than that, depending on how fast you be wanting the game. Uh, you can go ahead and unlock the ability to get on an L ship and then you can travel to any of the nation you see fit here. Uh, so just know the story itself that you pick in the beginning will be your starting point. But once you pretty much quote unquote get out of the tutorial, all the story and all the distant uh, country will all combine into one storyline. Just know if you pick a crack you end up not liking. You can of course change it. And if you're in a city you don't like. You can get out of it fairly quickly. By just playing through the tutorial. So do not feel overwhelmed. Or having to feel like you have to pick a certain class. To be in a certain area. I uh, just know it's only going to be for a little bit. And then you will be good to go on that and once you have your character created you will be brought to picking what server you want to play on the thing to keep in mind here final fantasy 14 is very unique here when it comes to its servers as you can see here we got a north america a data center a europe center and a japanese center with this you can go ahead and pick any of the servers that are available in the data centers and it doesn't really matter. So let's say your friend play on one server in North America, you play on a totally distant server. Do not worry, you can of course play with each other because Final Fantasy 14, as long as you're in the same region of the data center, you can go ahead and move 
freely between distance syllables as you see fit. If you want to play with somebody, you can go ahead and do that as long as you own the same region data center. There are only a few things you do want to keep in mind for the syllable itself. I will go ahead and have a link in the description uh, to the official data center website because there are a few things that happen here. Not only can you check uh, what syllable is available and up and if the game is down for making it from the website which once again just the official website the thing here you might be known seeing a couple of these area have some uh, symbols net to them so the main thing you want to keep an eye out here if you are trying to make a character on a syllable and the syllable is not letting you create your character it is mainly because of a few things might it be the syllable is in maintenance which you will see with a little red triangle but realistically, what you will want into more times than not is a court sort and syllable, as such as a court that one white right heel. You will note a X neck to the little a character and a, a red symbol. And of course, that means a no new character can be made on this syllable right now. Pretty much what that ends up translating to is if the syllable is green, that means there is slots available for new character to be made. And if it red, you can't make a character on that syllable right now. You can, of course, come back in a few hours or a few minutes and try again. If you are dead set on being on a Pacific syllable here, just know Final Fantasy XIV uh, does on occasion will have certain syllables that will not be available for new character creation, mainly because of the syllable being filled up. To keep that in mind, if you end up getting an error when trying to create your character on a Pacific syllable. And we have one more thing to talk about when it comes to the data center and the syllables itself, uh, which is something you will see every now and again, and more than likely, you will probably see that at the release of the Epop version of Final Fantasy XIV, which is a quote brand new syllable. These syllables will, of course, still exist in the same data center for whatever region. The main thing here is that they are brand new. That means they have a little bit of a drawback because uh, the player bait might not be the highest yet. The economy might be a little funky just because, you know, people put stuff up as they find it. And with that, uh, there is a little bit of a, I get debuff, you could say, uh, that come from that. Uh, well, uh, your affiliate may vary depending on the size of the syllable. And of course, growing it knows this and have some helping hand here to help you out. Uh, so if you do decide to play on a brand new syllable here, you're going to get yourself double affiliate bonus until level 80. Uh, so that is fantastic. Give you some extra affiliate to level up. As well as a gift of 10 silver chocobo fettle uh, to a chain for lower level a guild to improve leveling. So this is to make up uh, for the lack of, once again, stuff in the shop as well as crafters. Uh, so you're going to go ahead and get you some better armor and a gift of a 1 million guild to get you started. It sounds like a lot. It's technically not, as well as a extra 15 free days of playtime. So if you are a subscriber to Final Fantasy XIV, you play on one of these syllables, you will go ahead and get you 15 extra day onto your sub as another incentive uh, for you to actually take part in it to help build the community on that brand new syllable. So let's go ahead and just start this off here with a simple chain that can change a big feel to Final Fantasy XIV which is, of course, your movement. Because uh, when you start the game, you will go ahead and know that your character kind of got like a strafing uh, mechanic to them uh, from the motion. And it doesn't quite feel like you would have been from a, a normal third person a type of game, and any more so if you do play on a controller. And it might feel a little odd or might need a little bit getting you to, or maybe you just want to actually play it like a, a normal uh Sword person type of game. So what we need to do here is go ahead and head into system, into a character config, and up here near the top, you can see a called mouse and keyboard. You can play it with mouse and keyboard in the own console if you want. But the main thing we're gonna be looking at here is movement setting that will be under the general tag and standard is what it will be by default. And if you want to feel like a normal game, go ahead and put it to legacy. And then disable a camera pivot. That way you can control the camera as you see fit. Instead of the game auto controlling the camera. And then we're just going to go ahead and hit apply. And from here you will go ahead and note it. Now the game pretty much controls like you would have bet in any other third person game heels. So you made it into Final Fantasy now. And you're ready to play. You got your sword, your character, all that done. 
let's go ahead and discuss a what is the decent type of quests because uh in other rpgs or other mmo you might think maybe taking on as many quests as possible is the best way to level your character and the best way to progress within the main campaign and final fantasy 14 is a little bit distant when it comes to that so there is a grand total of three distant quest types that you need to look out for we have our main quests we have our unlocking of distant activities as well as just straight up side missions that are contained within themselves. so let's go ahead and discuss each of these so to start off here you might see some character that will have an estimation mark with it like file a symbol above their head these are of course the main story so if you are just trying to get through the main plot uh, to get caught up on the story before uh, the brand new expansion a don trail come out this is what you need to be focusing on is mainly these and they will go ahead and get you asset to all the character all the campaign stuff and of course uh, when it comes to this you might be wondering about the other two quests at all like leveling a consort just know if you just do the main campaign you will go ahead and get enough affiliates enough item to get you up to quote unquote in game and to complete the story as well as hitting the level cap uh, so just know if that's something you want to do and you don't really want to care about anything else it is highly recommended to of course do the quests for that and you do not have to worry about missing out on other affiliates and then our second quest type here as you can see uh, with the quest symbol being a blue with a plus net to it this means these are quests that will unlock new uh, activities for you to take part in might it be the hunting log that we talked about in our lap video check it out if you haven't as well as unlocking like uh taking part in exclusive like dungeon taking part in like golden saucer doing mini games all that type of stuff uh so when it come to this stuff if you see one of the blue uh quest mark with the plus sign if you got some time i do recommend taking part in these uh to just unlock more content for you to do in final fantasy and any if the content end up not being your thing it's still ideally a good to have all the stuff unlocked uh, so you got plenty of side activity and collecting and all the stuff that will come from this so you can go ahead and take part in that uh, for other rewards and affiliates and whatnot uh, but this is the main way you're going to unlock a lot of the content within final fantasy 14 and our final equip type peel is of course just a normal gold estimation mark these are 100 percent optional these are little like standalone equests and of course if you're going through the game you're trying to unlock all the stuff trying to complete the campaign you can go ahead and skip over these if you want because the once again will be standalone little quests that would just give you a little extra experience some item and nothing here that is like heavily needed but you know it's nice to keep them around just in case you do need a little extra experience if you are uh, taking part in leveling other classes these are just the heal if you want some little extra side stuff to take part in inside of 14 and so let's go ahead and discuss about actual travel and how you're going to be getting around here and to start off here let's talk about our ether white this is of course uh, going to be pretty much your checkpoint that you will find one if not many of them scattered around in distant zones and you want to go ahead and walk on up to them and when you click on them you will get an option here to attune to it i'm already attuned so i don't have the menu here uh, but once you attune to that ether white you can now fat travel back to that at any point but the main thing to keep in mind here is of course as you are doing this you will go ahead and notice each of the areas do cost this an amount of money so you are going to need gear uh, to uh, pay to travel around to all the this and eat the white around but there is a little tip here that is very useful especially for saving money and especially if you are hanging around like one of your city states or maybe a zone later on uh, that you will be coming back to over and over and over again i'm looking at you waking sands there is of course a simple way to save money which is of course after you have already attuned to the ether white itself uh, you can go ahead and uh, set this ether as a home point so if you die you will come back here and of course we have all we torn so if you go ahead and cap we torn heal 
you will go ahead and teleport back to where your home point is 100% for free. Uh, so this is a fantastic way, especially if you are fine uh, with going to one area. The only issue that comes from that is, of course, it have a recap timer of 900 seconds. So this is on a cooldown and you have to wait to use it which as you can see roughly translate to about 14 minutes that is something that you can also do but if you want to make this any more easier and you don't want to deal with the overall price of teleporting with the time limit for teleporting you can go ahead and do that as well by of course once again clicking on the eat the white and heading down to a red door as favorite so if you go ahead and do that it will become a new red door and you will go ahead and see the price to teleport will be cut in half. So that is a nice little way to save on some money. Especially if you're going to be teleporting around uh, more often. And you want to save a little bit of guild. Also one last thing here about the Itawai itself. Of course the big ones are going to be the main ones you want to be getting. But if you are inside a, a city state or a main hub area. You will go ahead and find a tiny ones a set around. And of course you want to go ahead and as you are for each of the cities. You want to go ahead and claim these as well. Uh, because when you claim them. You can go ahead and teleport uh, from one to another inside the city. 100% for free. So this is very helpful if you are someone who is jumping around uh, through distant areas or distant parts of the city. And of course once again with it being free. This is absolutely a must do. So be sure to grab all the tiny eat the white as you are point each of the hub cities. And there you have it. There are everything to hopefully help you get started. Of course, there are many other things we can talk about and we will in upcoming Final Fantasy video. Uh, such as some of the stuff to do that will help with a court combat, activities that you can do, and a whole bunch of more helpful tips coming very, very soon. But this is just a starting point for everyone that is joining. And the main thing you need to do right when you start Final Fantasy XIV. Hopefully you have found this video helpful in one way or another. If so, make sure to do thumbs up, subscribe, hit all the bells up below for any more Final Fantasy XIV videos here. Uh, since I am here to support all you new players over 20 players of XIV. So you can have a fantastic time jumping into XIV. Especially with the release of Epoch coming in the next few days but with that not gonna go ahead and do it for me and of course like always i will go ahead and see you in the comments